perfect so we are on the day one of this training program and as far as this day one is concerned we would be going to focus today on the module number one module number two and the module number three that we have just discussed in the outline so as far as the module number one is concerned we were just talking about that this is the basic or maybe we could say the introductory module as far as our power bi is concerned there are certain things that i am going to discuss with you all before we actually proceed with this module in terms of uh, technicality because i can see as far as the introduction is concerned i can see that we do have uh, uh, plenty of learners with us though who are uh, completely or entirely fresh when it when it comes to power bi so just to make them understand that uh, what this power bi is all about and why people are tending towards power bi these days so we'll be going to understand that facts too yes definitely as far as the lab is concerned i have given you the idea that for the first module no lab we don't have any lab for this now when the module 2 is concerned we are going to introduce ourselves to the very well known element of power bi that is the power bi desktop we are going to introduce ourselves to power bi desktop and majorly in this module we would be going to focus that how we can start getting the data on the power bi desktop so as far as the power bi desktop is concerned how we are going to get the data on it and yes we do have your first lab would be this there is a lab which is based upon this particular module and module number 3 we are understanding that once we get data on power bi desktop what should be what should be the next step the next step is definitely going to be clean or maybe we can say prepare the data prepare the data that is already you have taken on board on power bi desktop so how how we can clean and prepare the data what are the what are the best practices that we need to follow because there are certain things which are generic so we are going to talk about some of the generic stuff when it comes to cleaning and preparing the data you never know some of the some of the uh, transformation requirements that suits my reports uh, users need and maybe those transformations do not support your user your end user needs so yes we do have some some uh, maybe we could say generic transformations it depends whether you would be using them or you would be applying some of the advance on top of that so we'll be going to talk about them very effectively so i am going to precisely do what i am going to uh, let's say divide this page in two halves where we would be going to have a hand on hand uh, comparison between the traditional practice and uh, the latest one where we'll be using the power bi I, all right so let's get started and let's just understand that what are the traditional practices that we generally used to follow so when i talk about the traditional way or precisely the way without power bi this is without power bi and this is something that we would be going to understand this is with power bi okay so first we need to focus here now the end product in both the cases that we are looking forward to is what the end product that we are looking forward to in both the cases is the report so let's say this is the thing that we are looking forward to the report or maybe the dashboards which have fancy visualizations on them that will help my end users to have a good idea about the data the anomalies which are existing within the data and definitely that will help the stakeholders to 
uh, get the insight out of those visuals and make better business decisions. So what will happen when we do not have Power BI and when we are not using Power BI? We do understand that in order to create these reports, the primary thing that we are looking forward to is the data. Now the data which is available with us, that data precisely be in many shapes and formats. Maybe it could be a on-premises database that is SQL database. Maybe it could be a Excel file. Maybe it could be a resource which is coming from my cloud. It could be anything. My data could reside in anything. Now creating a report directly on these data sources is a big no. We generally don't do this. Why? Because the data that is available either in SQL, Excel, Cloud, that is not a clean data. Or maybe we could say the data which we are getting here, that data is based upon the OLTP. This is the data which belongs to OLTP environment. Or sometimes we used to call this as the detailed data. This is the detailed data that we have. Now, OLTP stands for Online Transaction Processing Data. This is transaction processing data. The data which is keep on pouring within the sources, maybe through some application or maybe through some user activities. So it is it is keep on keep on updating, keep on updating. That is why the transactional processing data. So preparing a report on a transactional processing data or maybe a detailed data is a big no no. We don't do that. So what is going to happen if we would not be going to create a report directly on these sources? In that particular case, <clears throat> excuse me. So in that particular case, what we need, we need some logical data to be extracted from uh, uh, maybe a data source of my choice. And then we'll see what next we need to do. So traditionally or probably when we do not have Power BI available with us, when it is not in action, the organizations need to think and they need to make a huge investments where this is the first point where they need to make the investment. The first point where the investment need to made is the ETL. At the ETL, I need to make the investment where ETL stands for extraction, transformation and loading. So what generally we do either we have to we have to hand over our data to uh, to maybe I could say an organization or probably we need to outsource this in such a way where people can extract transform my data logically. Or within my organization, I need to search or I need to I need to establish a team which can very well understand the process that a ETL processes so that the team would be able to do what the team would be able to logically extract the data that is required for the reports maybe there could be a possibility I have 70 Excel files where I have data or maybe the SQL from which I am going to get the data it have 250 tables we do have 250 tables available in the database. Are we going to use all these 70 Excel files and these 250 tables which are available in my SQL database? The answer is no, we would not be going to do that. We are going to logically extract the data. So maybe there could be a possibility out of these <clears throat> 250 tables that we have. We are precisely looking for seven tables and out of these 70 Excel files which I have on my board, maybe I am just looking forward for two Excel files. So this logical, uh, this logical data or maybe I could say the logical process where we are extracting the meaningful data on the board that further we need to investigate upon is the process which is known as the extraction. So we do this extraction. Perfect, we have extracted the data for which I need to create a report. Now what next? After extraction, we have to transform the data. 
so this etl tool maybe i could say this is a separate etl tool or the team who is handling this tool they are now going to whatever data that has got extracted they are now going to clean that data this cleaning is known as the transformation by the way so they would be cleaning this data removing unnecessary data we do understand when it is detailed data when it is tra uh, the transactional data lot of blank values unnecessary data types duplications multiple rows and columns which are making of some of time no sense so we need to clean all of that stuff we need to get rid out all, all that uh, maybe i could say uh, uh, unlogical uh, data and then we would be we would be taking care of only that data which is required for the reporting or maybe which is required for the end users to further analyze so we clean and finally what we do we finally after cleaning we load the data now where i'm going to load the data am i going to directly load my data in the report again it's no we are not going to directly load the data on the report we need to load data somewhere where we would be managing it in terms of whatever 7 plus 2 7 tables and 2 excel files that we have taken on board whatever data now we have we need to link that data so that the, the so that the data start communicating with each other we do understand this fact that within the database we do have the referential integrity concept as in one table have some primary keys one table have some foreign keys and we do have a link between them a relationship between them so that they can communicate with each other similar kind of communication mechanism we need to manage and we need to establish before we actually we before we actually push the data to the report so again this is something that we are not going to do then what we are going to do if we are not going to load the data directly on the reports then what we are planning to do so here we are actually loading the data and this is the second point where organizations need to invest so where we load precisely when we load data we load data in the data warehouses okay so just to quickly uh, have a recap that what we have discussed so we were just discussing that data that we are getting for the reports the prime source is the detailed data the data which we are getting from the databases or the a uh, detailed environment so that data would not be an appropriate so we need to first use the etl tool or the activity where we logically extract the data make it more meaningful when it comes to uh, the cleaning and then we have to load the data in the data warehouse now when it says data warehouse just like our detailed data or the databases that we have it work in oltp environment the data warehouses they work in the olap environment the analytical processing environment which keep track of data that is a summarized data so it take the summary data into consideration this is the detailed data which we extract we clean we logically manage that data and we summarized that data so that summary data is going to be available where it is going to be available in the warehouse where we would be having all these tables available so those seven which we have got from database the two from the excel files so all this data is going to be there and they are logically connected with each other in in one or another manner so this is the warehouse that we have and now this warehouse is again the second point where organizations maybe need to invest data warehousing capability is not a easy task we do understand that it is a warehouse we understand it's just like a godown silo which is keeping the old to oldest data in a very appropriate manner so that we can we can have an historical data with us for analytical purpose so we do keep on pouring data that's why spacing resources 
and maintenance, optimization, troubleshooting, all the things need to be very effectively managed when it comes to the warehouses. So generally, um, I used to say that warehouses, having a warehouses is just like uh, buying an elephant. Somehow we managed to build them, but uh, their maintenance is something that is really very uh, challenging task that we need to do. All right, so we have now the logical data that is apt for preparing the reports. So this data or generally what will happen that on this data, we we use or this data is precisely be used by some of the reporting tools which are available. So we do have plenty of them. I am just assuming or probably I can say I can hope that some of you or plenty of you are aware of uh, the reporting tools that we have. So we have OBI, we have click view, we have tab views, very popular. And yes, definitely we do have uh, multiple reporting tools which are available uh, in, in the market and uh, we can use we can take a use and we, maybe we can take a help of any of the reporting tool which is available and those reporting tools will be appropriate now for creating my reports. So they are the one on the basis of which now the reports will be designed, the visuals will be designed and, and stuff like that. So this is the traditional flow of activity that we used to have where the main two things where people need to focus or the organizations need to focus is one, the ETL tool and the second important is the warehouses. Now how Power BI is going to help us? Let's just see this thing now. The main thing that Power BI is having or Microsoft Power BI is having, it says it depends upon the SaaS infrastructure. That is software as a service. You just only give us data. Microsoft Power BI says you just only give us data. We don't need anything else beyond that. Even we don't need any ETL tool or a warehouse capability. Everything is in house and that capability attached with the Power BI. How? Let's just understand this thing. The data would be same. The data in this case also is going to be same. So we have data and that data is coming from the OLTP environment. Everything is going to be same. Again, there could be data coming from SQL. It could be coming from Excel or maybe it could be coming from any cloud option. Everything is available. Now, how we are going to extract this logical data then? because we were saying that we are not going to have any ETL tool. So we have a full fledged application of Power BI, which is available. And what we call it, we call that application or software as the Power BI desktop. So we have this tool, this application, this software in Power BI spectrum that we call as Power BI desktop. This is a very, uh, maybe I could say efficient and a self managed uh, application. How? Because when we say Power BI desktop, this Power BI desktop has an option in it with the help of which we can get data and we can connect to more than 60 plus sources which are available. Beat it, your databases. When it comes to traditional databases, SQL, Oracle, MariaDB, DB2, HANA, Postgre. So you can connect with any of the on-premises database. You can connect with T uh, CSV, Excel, JSON, XML files. If your data is on web, it could be SharePoint applications. It, it could be from web. When it is cloud-based, uh, maybe mechanism, it could be Azure SQL. It could be NoSQL, that is my Cosmo DBs. It could be Azure Data Lakes, so on and so forth. You just, you just name the data source, it would be there, hopefully. So my Power BI desktop is capable to get data from multiple data sources in one go. So that is a process of extraction. 
so we can easily extract data from multiple sources available on power bi desktop what next after extraction we need to transform so do we need any extra etl tool the answer is no when we extract the data within power bi itself we have a very effective in house i could say uh, operational uh, mechanism and we used to call it power query editor this power query editor act as a in house etl tool for power bi so using this power query editor we are going to do all the logical transformations we would be able to manage and do all the logical transformations and after those transformations now what we need to do we need to load the data so where we are loading the data in the warehouse prior to this in the warehouses here we do not need the warehouses what we have we have the data model which actually replicates or the replaced to the warehouses so we load the data within the power bi itself within the power bi desktop only so we are or i am not getting anywhere outside power bi desktop i am extracting data within desktop i am i am transforming the data using power query editor it's here only then we will be loading the data in the data model which is again a part of power bi desktop it, it's internally available in power bi desktop and finally using the data on this data model or which is available in this data model we would be able to design these reports so we do not need any separate etl tool we do not need any warehouses and we do not need any extra reporting tool this is software as a service a single software which is giving me all the services only i need is the data that is why it says the data is yours give us your data and we will give you a full fledged a uh, pre prepared analyzed report on the basis of that because we have all the capabilities available and this is the only single point solution one stop solution i could say that we have for all our reporting requirements so what do we need only this power bi desktop and this power bi desktop is capable to perform plenty of things for us rather than investing our time and uh, maybe we could say economy and cost on this tool on this warehouse and maybe looking for which reporting tool will give me a best of the reporting experience so this is why this is why power bi which is actually now being becoming a giant and capturing a lot of uh, market yes this is one of the powerful uh, tool that we have from microsoft and it do very well with uh, the other office 365 capabilities when it comes to the office 365 capabilities it goes really very well with them so that is why also uh these are some of the maybe i could say key highlights which make power bi more popular these days as compared to the other reporting tools so i hope the comparison between the traditional practices that we used to follow when we are creating the reports and how we are creating the reports now these days using the power bi desktop is clear to us power bi we do have a lot of stuff to discuss okay that when it says power bi desktop so what it is are we going to simply get it from internet install it because i was just talking about that this is a software this is an application so from where we are going to get this application is it available freely on internet are we going to simply get it install and uh, are we ready to use or do we have to pay something for that so we need to we need to pause for all such questions and we will be going to surely come to all of them when we will be start initiating the first module module number 1 so uh, this is the basic introduction which is not available again in uh, i would saying in the uh, books or uh, somewhere so if you want to say take the screenshot for this whiteboard you can take it i'm all right so module first which talks about getting started with microsoft data analytics now before we start up with this module these are the concepts that we are going to get in this is the entire concept based module where we'll be talking about some of the multiple factors that we may need to take care of and we are further going to introduce ourselves module by module 
I guess definitely as far as the labs are concerned, we do not have any practical stuff to do with this particular module. Just a basic understanding that we need to set up. Now, when it comes to data analytics and Microsoft data analytics, one thing that we are surely going to connect up with is data or precisely the information is the most strategic business asset that we have for the entire world. Now, when we were talking about an organization or a business entity, data is coming and flowing from multiple sources. It could be from uh, the polls that you are keep on posting on LinkedIn, Twitter or something like that, or it could be my uh, my databases which with which to and fro we work. It could be application based data. It could be lots of Excel files which are available or maybe there are some cloud supported data sources too. So data is coming and flowing within the organization on a daily basis very efficiently. Now the major thing that we need to take care of is how we need to manage this data. The major challenge that a data analyst usually came across, how they can make this data more meaningful, more logical, so that people would be able to make valuable business decisions out of that. How this raw data and information is going to impact my businesses. So generally, business decision makers, the people who are the stakeholders, they are actually dependent upon the accurate story to derive better business decisions and definitely the key to unlock uh, this all uh, this all uh, we could say uh, virtue is is the reports the insightful and meaningful reports now before we actually get into the stuff where we design such kind of meaningful and impactful reports what we need to do is we need to understand what kind of analytical approach one can follow because depending upon organizations depending upon data requirement we have several kind of analytics or maybe I could say analytical approaches now when we say data analysis so we precisely define data analysis as the capability to tell a story with your data which will be using multiple artifacts or maybe the visuals, fancy visuals, just to make the data more attractive. So when it comes to analyzing the data, there are some kind of approaches or probably we could say the categories. We do have some categories or we do have some uh, approaches which are beyond these categories too. But yes, they are some of the basic one that we have here. So the first one that we could see here is the descriptive analytics now the keyword itself suggests they are really very self-explanatory by the way when we say descriptive this kind of uh, maybe I could say the analytical technique will help us to answer the questions about what has happened based on the historical data now this descriptive analytics means describing something it will it is a technique which summarizes the large data sets and try to describe the outcomes to the end end users or probably the stakeholders. So descriptive one. Now the diagnostic technique, the diagnostic analytics. Diagnostic means troubleshoot. As in this approach is a little supplement or maybe I could say this technique is a supplement to the basic descriptive analytical technique that we have because whatever findings that we are going to get from the descriptive analytics we will get a little deeper into those and we will find the causes behind that because the performance indicators they will help us uh, in investigating the uh, stuff that why they are good or maybe why they are they are worsened so we are diagnosing and we were troubleshooting and find the logics behind the things which are happening in the past so that is a diagnostic approach then the predictive one so predict something predict for future so maybe whatever you have analyzed or whatever whatever you have diagnosed probably using those techniques we were further trying to identify the trends and we are determining are they likely to get reoccur in the future or not so this predictive analytical technique or tool it provide the valuable insights into what may happen in the future so maybe I could say that in my financial year 20, uh, 2021, this is something that the trend of revenue, which is uh, quarter on quarter. 
so we just dig down into that data and we find some logical uh, uh, logical layouts from that and we would be predicting are we going to get some similar kind of layouts or probably is there any kind of increase in terms of the revenue or profits that we are going to get in in the upcoming financial year that we have so that is the predictive we are predicting something now we are predicting something but we face some uncertainties as in we are facing some uncertainties maybe people have predicted something in the year uh, in the financial year 1920 and uh, this uh, pandemic hits really very badly so what will happen to their prediction are there any another options that way that they have thought of or probably they have certain other plans so this perspective and cognitive analytics will go hand on hand these are the kind of analytical approaches which will help us to understand that what might happen if the circumstances change how we will be going to handle those situations which is based upon the uh, uh, existing knowledge base whatever we have are we have some certain plans which will help us to do certain future uh, maybe we could say investigations so these kind of analytical approaches will be very best when we were planned something or maybe we could say we have predicted something but unfortunately we have faced some circumstances changes so at that time perspective or maybe i could say a blend of perspective and cognitive analytics will give in action moving ahead the roles that we have available in data so we have a variety of roles and responsibilities available in the data when it comes to data <clears throat> data database data artifacts and something like that so we could see that there are some roles this is we could call the designation or the role that we have uh, in microsoft and these are the training codes or maybe we could say the exam codes that are associated with that designated role so we are here we are here and we are actually understanding this role the data analytics analytics initially or traditionally we used to have the business analyst too in the organization now generally what happen uh, ideally the responsibility of a, a business of a business analyst and data analyst is is actually similar they do have they do have some similar set of responsibilities so these days these two roles have been as in the business analyst role have been dissolved actually we only have a data analyst by the way the stuff that a business analyst used to do a little different as compared to data analyst so when we, when we say data analyst here uh, as far as this role is concerned we would be going to understand the responsibility of a data analyst for profiling cleaning transforming the data designing and building the scalable data models and then further preparing the reports so this is the overall responsibility of a data analyst now what what extra business analyst used to do business analyst are the people they are the ones who are closer to the business itself and they they are really having a very speciality in terms of interpreting the data which is coming out of the visualizations so organizations understand people who design visuals they should also know how data is coming out of the visualizations they should also be specialized in terms of interpreting the data which is coming out of the reports or visuals so that is why now these days the responsibility or the accountability of designing the visuals and reading the data or interpreting the data which is coming out of them is the is the accountability of a single person only and that is a data analyst so in plenty of organizations you may have came across the role of uh, bi developers business intelligence developers so organizations actually combine these two roles together the business analyst data analyst and they create the bi developers these days all right now the exam code which is associated with the role that you are learning here is a da100 this is data analyst da stands for data analyst which is da100 soon this da100 is going to be expired this exam code of microsoft is going to be expired with a new one and that is pl300 so that means if you are going to appear for the certification of data analyst associate within this month before 31st of the march on your dashboards you would be going to get da100 
but after 31st of March, let's say if I talk about myself, I am a data analyst associate. I have already passed this exam some good years back. Now, do I have to sit for this PL 300 exam once again? The answer is no. On my dashboard, certification dashboard, automatically the data analyst associate exam code is going to be replaced with PL 300. That DA 100 is going to be replaced with PL 300. So you are not supposed to retake this exam. But yes, definitely, uh, if you are planning to sit for this exam, let's say post 31st of this March, in that case, the exam code that you need to look for is PL 300. All right, that would be the exam code that you need to search for while booking the exam from Microsoft PSN view and definitely we need to follow. Now, as far as the content is concerned, there are some minute changes that we have in terms of the exam structure or the exam content. But let me tell you one thing in DA 100, you are uh, learning more you are understanding more of the content in PL 300. We have uh, we have content little less. Some of the content, some of the modules have been uh, re improvised and they have been reduced in terms of content as far as PL 300 is concerned. So don't worry, you are actually learning a lot of amount, which is uh, which is sufficient to sit for both DA 100 and PL 300 exam. On the last day, we would be going to have one small optional, uh, I could say discussion. Uh, why I'm just marking it as optional because I would not uh, uh, force uh, everyone to be part of that. But yes, it is highly, highly recommended and uh, it's good that if you can attend that discussion, we would be discussing about the exam, the pattern, the do's and don'ts, how you can book that exam and uh, some of the uh, resources that you can utilize just to prepare yourself more for this exam. Because other than the training and the labs that we were doing, we should uh, be aware of the factors that uh, what kind of questionnaires, time, passing percentage, patterns, definitely that are required. And yes, throughout this training program, whenever we'll be discussing some topics, some of the uh, modules, every module during every module, I would be pointing out important uh, uh, topics and patterns which are uh, in reference to the exam that this kind of question you can expect or from this section you can expect a question of, of this kind. So we would be discussing to and fro all these things too. Sounds interesting. So let's let's keep moving ahead and now the other role that we can see in the picture is data engineers. People who are responsible for ingesting transforming the data which is available on cloud these days. So the primary responsibility of the data engineers is, is actually the usage and the availability of on premises and cloud data services to the data analyst. They are the people who are who are responsible for provisioning and setting up the data platform technology for again hybrid on premises or maybe entirely cloud, they manage and secure the flow of data. Now, when it comes to data, it is not only structured data, by the way, it is structured, semi structure and unstructured too from multiple sources. So people who would be data engineers, they must be carrying some uh, fundamental knowledge of Azure. So that is a uh, what we could say is not AZ. We could say AZ 900 or we have one DP 900. These are the again Microsoft courses which help us to understand and uh, uh, get into the basics and fundamentals of Azure cloud fundamentals and post that this data engineering or data engineers are the extensive uh, role that we have. The exam code associated with this is this DP 203. Post data engineers, we have one more role, the data scientist. People who view data with four eyes. <laughs> yes, actually, they, they view data with four eyes. They are the ones who, who help data analysts because data scientists are those who just not only follow the basic analytical approaches or categories that we have just talked about. They use and follow some of the EDA approaches to that is the exploratory data analytical techniques. As in the data scientists, they are the ones who use the 
artificial intelligence or maybe we could say they use the scripting technique to write the algorithms which can understand my data more in depth and details and probably they can come back they can come back to the data analyst with some solutions that uh, whatever data you are working with if you analyze it in this way maybe you would get a better understanding or hold on to that so they are the ones who are the helping hands for the data analyst by the way in this mod in this entire training program we do have a module uh, module number 10 where we're going to talk about some of the emerging capabilities of power bi in terms of advanced analytics ideally advanced analytics done by the data scientists but we here in this training program going to understand if a data analyst have to do advanced analytics so what are the key features that we have available in power bi which will help us in getting the support without uh, getting more into ai and writing uh, the algos uh, using the scripting phenomena and yes we do have a training available and that for an exam this dp100 last but not the least the role that we have is the database administrators the one who are the father of databases the one who are the key responsible persons for the overall availability consistent performance optimization and rest of the database solutions so when it comes that data is not available or database is something which is not uh, not approachable we need to we need to understand the database administrators they have a lot of uh, things for which they are accountable because they are the overall uh, key uh, persons who are managing the operational aspects of uh, the data again available on premises maybe it could be on a hybrid data platform or uh, entirely on cloud and yes we do have another option for them that is the dp300 so these are some of the roles that we have which are roaming around data and i could say this slide will help us in understanding what could be my next step after after data analyst where i want to go where i want to move probably i am very freaky in terms of managing data on cloud and to and fro i try to connect up with my cloud sources just to analyze the data i would be using some uh, analytical services azure synapse and stuff like that so maybe this dp203 would be would be your cup of tea probably you can go into it understand effectively the cloud uh, in a more relevant manner and then you can see some of the uh some of the other sides of power bi too probably that uh, maybe because of time constraints we would not been able to cover up in this training program but yes definitely there are so many things that are available on cloud which will go very well with power bi just to give you the out of the world visualizations and now the day to day activities that a data analyst used to do what are the tasks that a data analyst used to perform so definitely a data analyst on the daily basis we do understand they deal with data they work with data they focus on how we can make it more logical and reliable they further get into it to make more uh, relevant data in terms of relationship and then further start preparing visualizations and definitely for longer run they need to manage all of them so whenever we connect with the data sources whatever data sources that are available we are getting the data from these data sources and the first task that we need to do is prepare so now when we say prepare as a data analyst when we are using power bi we would be efficiently using the power query editor just to prepare the data just to transform it modify it as per the end user or report requirement that we have then after preparing the data we are loading the data to the data model and we need to understand and we would be going to dedicate one entire day towards this phrase model data model tomorrow we would be going to dedicate the uh, complete day of our training to this data modeling and it best of, best of its techniques because this is the backbone of my report we will be going to talk about it in detail don't worry if my data model is not appropriate we would be going to see this fact that the reports or the visuals that we were using they are not rendering the actual or accurate amount of information so this is the spine of your report and the majority of time the data analyst used to spend on this section modeling the data where they are keep on understanding which data is important and which we need to get rid of because we need to create a compact data model which is resource wise and performance wise appropriate 
we would be focusing upon how we can make sure that the data model which we have created and in which we have a lot of tables available they are in sync with each other there is a proper communication and relationship because if we do not have a communication and relationship between the uh, tables in terms of data modeling then again the effects is definitely that we are going to see on the reports so a day, as in being a data analyst this is the task on which they spend their quality of time a quality of time i, I would say 90 percent of their time they spend on the data modeling visuals when my data model is confirmed, it's it's all set, then yes, definitely we will start giving life to our data. How? With the help of effective visualizations which are available in Power BI. In Power BI, we do have a huge, I could say, availability of built-in visualizations. There are more than 30 plus uh, visualizations which are available. So we have some of the built-in, some of uh, maybe we could say custom visualizations. Depending upon requirement, we can we can choose them. And yes, definitely choosing a, a wise visualization or wisely selecting a visualization is again one of the key aspects of designing a report. Because every time a bar chart is not going to work for me. In all my reports, if I'm going to put a pie chart, that would be a, a monotony which will come over there. So I need to break that. I need to understand when I need to go for a card visual, when the bar chart is good, when the line chart is good. And yes, we do have some other uh, fancy visuals too. So which visual can help me to get fit into which kind of requirement? So we would be understanding and talking about that stuff too. Further, when we visualize the data, when we design an appropriate report, we still have a scope to analyze it using the advanced analytical capabilities that I was just talking about a couple of minutes back. So we would be understanding that how further we can get into that data and we can uh, initiate the scope of understanding it in a more effective manner. And finally, whatever Power BI assets that you are creating, be it a report, that you have created, probably a dashboard, a data set, data flow to and fro, we would be managing them for a long run operation. So we would be having some centralized repositories that we will be going to uh, we'll be going to introduce very soon to all of you. So we would be having a centralized repositories and they would be managing all these Power BI assets for future references too for the organizations and that too for the stakeholders. So these are all the tasks that a data analyst used to perform. Moving ahead, so here officially I could say we are getting started with the Power BI. So when I say Power BI, as I have mentioned uh, some couple of uh, minutes back, so this is software as a service, whereas a lot of stuff is there available in a single platform solution itself. So it's a collection of software. Now, when we say collection of software, this Power BI desktop, if I could just focus my screen, this Power BI desktop is a software that we have. So I could say it's a software. So not only this software, we have multiple softwares available in the Power BI spectrum. The desktop is the most popular out of all of them. We'd be going to spend 80% uh, of our time on this software itself. So desktop. We have a report builder too. Now, services. When we say services, we have a web component of Power BI as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. The web component is known as the Power BI services. We will be going to talk about this component a little in detail very soon once we'll end this module. So we have a software. We have the services. It do have a capability of having the apps as in we have Power BI mobile apps too available. You can go to your uh, smartphones, go to your app store or a play store, check Power BI, Microsoft Power BI there, you'll get the Microsoft Power BI app there. Now how to get into that is something that you need to understand and know. So we have the apps with which we can just simply connect to the pre-created reports and dashboards that we have. I can, we can simply have a hold on that and we can access them in the app too. Along with that, we have the Power BI connectors also. Now what they are, they are the stuff or they are the gateways which help us to establish the communication between the web component services and maybe I could say the base data source from where we actually get the data 
on the Power BI desktop. So over and all, that is why I was mentioned this is software as a service where in order to get data only we need uh, somebody's permission because I am going to access your data. Probably I'm going to access my data. So data is the only thing which is out of the scope, which is the outside uh, stuff that we have rest. All other things that we have in Power BI, they are the in-house capabilities that we have. So everything, be it a software, a service, a mobile application and multiple connectors that we have, which will help Power BI very effectively to get the data from multiple data sources. So this is this is the basics of Power BI. And now let me quickly, uh, I could say, switch my uh, my screen to a whiteboard once again just to make you understand that how this desktop and this services are connected to each other and what are the things that we need we need to know some of the things we need to know so i am going to quickly switch my screen to the whiteboard and going to reshare my screen once again with you all There we go. So I am on my whiteboard as of now, and uh, I hope my screen is visible to each one of you. Perfect. Now let's uh, let us understand what is the what is the communication mechanism that we have. So yes, definitely we have this Power BI desktop and let me tell you one interesting fact i was just talking about from where we can get this power bi desktop because a couple of minutes back when we were discussing this uh, when we were discussing this we were talking about from where we can get this power bi desktop this is an application this is a software which we need to install on the machine and we could see in the virtual machines power bi desktop so where we are going to get it now we will be going to have an answer for the same. So this Power BI desktop that we would be going to use, this Power BI desktop is a, a application or a free software that you can easily get from uh, the internet. You can get it from the web. Just simply, simply go for Power BI desktop, download, and uh, you're good to go. That means without any investment, this Power BI desktop will give you a capability that it will help you to get data from multiple data sources which are available. You can get data, you can use the Power Query Editor to transform that data. You would be loading that data in the data model and further you are doing what? You are designing the full-fledged reports which are available. So all you can do is free, no cost, nothing, nothing as an investment that you need to do. But we are using this Power BI desktop for the personal use here. The reports that we are creating that are not globally get shared with my team, with my stakeholders, with the users or probably with my management. Now, if I want these reports to be get to be get published. Now, if I want these reports to be published where other users can also see and access this. So how I can do all these things, I would be able to do all these things with the help of again, this Power BI desktop itself. On this desktop, we have an option to publish. Now, when we click that option and we publish our reports, where do they get published? they actually get published to the web component. I'm so sorry for my drawing. This is a little weird, but uh, uh, please, please uh, manage with the same. All right, so this is my web component. This is the Power BI Dex. Now, when I say Dex, this is desktop. This is the desktop application I was just talking about. And this is the web component. And this web component generally known as the Power BI services. And just to get, just to go on this Power BI services, what we need to do is we need to, um, we need to actually go to 
dot power bi dot com this is precisely the url that uh, uh, that we need to follow app dot power bi dot com now when we go to this app dot power bi dot com let me adjust it here when i go to this app dot power bi dot com this is the url as i was just talking about and this is not free here actually the subscription came in action so here i need to get into some subscription i need to pay to microsoft i have used their free tool a lot but yes when i have to when i have to get into its uh, uh, maybe i could say expanded capabilities i have to get it to subscription so when it comes to power bi subscription this is the first that we have free subscription nothing to pay it. but we do have two other subscriptions which are entitled and those two are let me just adjust them a little here and i'll come back now now these two subscriptions what they are they are the one is the pro subscription or a license and the other one that we have is the premium now it depends it depends on the organization for an individual perspective we use the free license for the organization's perspective we either go for pro or premium because there is a huge cost which involve in this let me just show you this thing and let me share this link with you so that you would be having a handy uh, detail on the same so let me go here and check for this power bi subscription i could go there maybe and we'll get that i guess this is the one which i'm looking forward to and we could see that there is a cost cost in terms of per month some investment so this is power bi pro so for per user if i am going to buy this license this is per user per month cost that organization need to invest and this is for power bi premium per user and this is per cap capacity the cost is different because the capabilities are different the features what power bi pro can do and what power bi premium can do there are a lot of differences see model size this is this is data model size that i was just talking about there are there are other differences too that we are keep keep going to discuss uh, during during uh, this training program as far as the capabilities of pro and premium is concerned so i've just make a note of uh, this link and let me just share it quickly in the chat box with you and uh, there you go one more interesting fact which i would like you all to know this is actually not an interesting fact <laughs> rather to say a very important uh, announcement which i want to make is please do copy all the relevant resources and links which i am sharing with you all because soon once this training get end you may not have access to these chats probably so at that time you will not been able to access these links so it is highly recommended to prepare a separate word document for this training perspective keep on pouring and pasting all the links and resources that i am sharing here for your uh, future references all right so let's get uh, back to my uh, whiteboard again and these are the subscription i was just talking about so when it comes to services services is the platform where we would be able to interact not only with the reports but other other valuable assets of power bi too because when it comes to the building blocks of power bi there are not only uh, we could say there are not only the reports that we have we do have the dashboards we do have dashboards we do have the data flows we do have the workbooks we do have definitely the reports we do have we do have the data sets too so we do have all these assets available and they all are available on the web component so we would be managing them because when we go to this app.powerbi.com we have a dedicated area that we'll be going to introduce to in module number 11 just to make you understand that we call it as the workspace so that is a workspace so in workspace we will be keep on pouring this content we will be managing it depending upon the capability that we have 
So this is the basic flow of activities. How we get the data? We actually get the data from the data sources that we have. Then we create reports here. We publish them to Power BI services and we would be able to see all those on Power BI services and if it required and if we have an accessibility, we would be able to view all of them on the App Store. Now the fun fact is how we are getting into Power BI web. When we go here app.powerbi.com, let me just quickly show you. Let me open up a private window and let me go here app.powerbi.com. When we go here, it will ask for a user ID. Now, which email ID I have to give here? Definitely <clears throat> all these uh, subscriptions and uh, other things, they are associated. If I again go back to that subscription link, you could see they all are associated with the Microsoft 365 E5 accounts. So you must be having your organization must have provided you some Office 365 uh, credentials and though credentials are going to be used to get into the Power BI services. OK, now if I'm if I'm using the free version, let's say if I'm using this one free one, then who is going to provide me this Office 365 uh, uh, E5 account? Who is going to give me this? For this, what we need to do is we precisely require this thing. So first step that I need to do if I am experiencing this Microsoft Power BI, uh, I want to experience it free probably or just to give you a small tip, we would be using all these virtual environments for your labs. If you want to replicate, if you want to replicate these virtual environments on your local systems for that, this is the first thing that you need. That is Microsoft Office 365 E3 trial account. So Microsoft provide us the flexibility where. Where what we can do, we can create a free trial account, which is having a capability. I guess I have just accessed the wrong uh, link. Let me just go here. I'm not sure whether this is also a correct one. No, this is also not the correct one. Let me just give you the correct one. This is all E3, E5 I want. E5 trial. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to the E3. This is the E5 uh, we are looking forward to. Let me just open it over here. And yes, this is this is something that we need. OK, so this is as of now not available. Let me just check. I if I'm not. Missing something. Just allow me a second. OK, it's not E5, it's E3 only, but I guess I have not uh, went to the correct. One, so let me just check. Office 365 Enterprise E3 and then trial. There we go. So this is the one that we need. Now let me check. Here you can see this is the free trial. I was just talking about this one. So let's say I want to use Power BI for my own capabilities as in uh, I'm not belonging to any organization. I have a lot of Excel stuff with me that I need to analyze. I need to prepare some fancy dashboards and reports. So for that, definitely uh, if I have to <clears throat> create the dashboard, for that, I need to go to my Power BI services and in order to get into Power BI services, I need an email that I am able to create using this free trial. So you go there, you use your personal email ID and uh, as in I'm just taking an example, you can use your personal email ID and you can have a free free single sign on account which is provided by Microsoft to you. It is having a validity of 30 days you would be able to access the 30 days account 
post that definitely that will be gone and uh, using that account for using that th account which is having a 30 day of validity 30 days of validity by the way in power bi you would be able to upgrade yourself from a free user to a pro user so within your power bi services without investing a single penny in the cost you can get the you can get benefited from the pro services too <clears throat> for a trial period of 60 days two months so there are there is a trial that is available you can you can get a leverage from that and you can uh, just explore this power bi so it will be requiring a email id so let me just say i have one so let me just log in and show you so this is the single sign on id which i was just talking about on microsoft.com so this is the id by the way for your labs Microsoft has already given you some of the uh, credentials. I'm going to show you when they will be required to be get accessed. So I'm going to show you, you all individually have a, on Microsoft.com single sign on ID Office 365 credentials available for you in your virtual environment. So we'll be going to see them when you'll be requiring them. So I'm just submitting it as of now. So this is my, my single sign on ID, which I have. I need to give the password. And I am getting in as of now I said no and this is my power BI services I have also I'm also a uh, user who is as of now freely getting all the benefits out from here because you could see on the top there is a trial which is running for me and this is my profile and the license type you could focus upon is pro this is the pro license so this is my power BI I have workspaces. Remember, I was just talking about that there is a space which we call as workspaces and within a workspace, we would be pouring all the Power BI assets very effectively. So this is my workspace. I have a plenty of them. Maybe I can get into one of them and reports, dashboards, data sets. There are there are so many things which uh, we could see which are available here. And yes, definitely this is also one of my uh, one of my capability we can go to the downloads option and from here also we can get all the required uh, applications we can get the desktop we can get power bi for mobile and there are some connectors and other uh, maybe i could say the applications too so this is again one one uh, uh, solution from where i can see and understand from where i can get the power bi desktop so I can simply go. It will take me to the place I need to get and it is trying to open up in the store. So probably if I open, it will open the Microsoft store in front of me and help me to download my Power BI desktop. By the way, I do have a local copy of Power BI desktop with me, so I don't need to download it again. So this is this is what I have as my Power BI services. And uh, this is something what is the flow of uh, connection and activities that we have within desktop, within services, within applications. And that is why we call this, where is my PowerPoint presentation? That is why we call Power BI as software as a service because so many things within that have got bundled within the same uh, domain itself that would giving us an ease of access to have account on all of them. So this is basic, basic thing that we need to understand. And once we're getting more deeper into the modules, we'll be picking up the section wise stuff. We will be dedicating ourselves to desktop. We'll be talking about services more, more of its options and, and other things. So the use of Power BI. So what we were doing, this is something we have just seen uh, in, in terms of demonstration. We have uh, explained this slide. So these are the data sources which are available. We are getting the data on the application that is my desktop. So this is the desktop that we have Power BI Dex and whatever reports that we are designing using the Power BI desktop, we would be able to access them either on services. That is my web component Power BI services or probably we can view them on the mobile app too. So depending upon our accessibility, our requirement, our wish, we can access these reports and these stuff on the components app and the services that we have. The building blocks of Power BI. So we have talked about plenty of them, the dashboard, the report, 
the data sets, visuals. So they all are the building blocks. They are the one which which actually uh, give a base to Power BI. So the visuals, and you could see there are plenty of them: pie chart, maps, line, card, bar, scattered plot. So many of them are available. They all are the building blocks, visuals, which help us to interact with the data in a more effective way. The data set on which my visuals are based. If I do not have data, what is going to be uh, what is going to be uh, maybe I could say forecast onto the visuals. What my visuals is going to give me? They are giving the data actually. So we need data. Reports, the multi-pager information that we will be going to design using Power BI Desktop. So this is my Power BI Desktop, which we use to get data. We here use multiple visualizations available. We have a lot of data available, and we are designing a multi-pager report here. So I could see a information page, a new hire page. Maybe this is an HR report. I could see it's a human resource report. So active and separation, new hire scorecard, bad hire. So all the information that we have, and we do have a lot of visuals available. So we are creating a multi-pager information, and that too with the help of the reports. We have dashboards. There are many differences between a report and a dashboard that we are going to understand. Although we could see this also have visuals and this also have visuals. But other than visuals, my dashboard can have uh, uh, maybe I could say some other important information too. So we'd be going to discuss about them. Just a basic difference between a report and a dashboard is a report is a multi-pager information that we have in Power BI Desktop. Dashboard is a single page canvas story that we have in Power BI services. So as for now, this is the one big difference that we have. We'll be going to talk about many of them when we'll uh, be in, we'll get into detail about this module. So, and the last but not the least that we have is the tour of uh, the Power BI services. I've just give you an ideology how to get into Power BI services using, using that single sign on ID. You're not supposed to do anything as of now practical. All right, once the time come, I'll let you know, don't worry. But I've given you an overall idea. What are the things which are required to just uh, join all the, uh, maybe I could say the blocks of the puzzle just to complete it. So they are all the Lego blocks. I, I need to connect one with other and then I can design a beautiful frame or report. And then definitely we would be using the, uh, as in uh, extensive uh, capability of Power BI services where we'll keep on, posting the content on the workspaces and yes definitely others will be able to access data because maybe I am designing a report for a team of 20 people now I want those 20 to to contribute to understand that content and further investigate so we would be collaborating with the stakeholders and end users on the power bi services that that is the web component that we have and with this, we have successfully completed and concluded the first module uh, for today. So we have understood that uh, what are the basic necessities that we need to understand. And uh, uh, definitely uh, that uh, uh, what is Power BI Desktop, what are its capabilities, the, the flow of uh, activities, how to get data, and uh, what is the service component to and fro. So we have, we have discussed and touched the basic things that we need to discuss more in detail when we'll uh, get into the respective modules. So now module two, which, which help us in understanding how we can get the data in Power BI. So basically this module will help us in understanding that what all sources that we have, what all kind of data sources that we have available with the help of which we can easily connect up uh, which, which can easily connect up and we can get the data on board. And what are the different, maybe we could say connectivity mechanisms through which we can easily <clears throat> connect to these data sources. Now, this module is the first module basically <clears throat> where we start exploring the practical part two. We would be, we would be seeing some of the demonstrations and that we'll be going to exactly replicate. I would not say exactly replicate, but yes, definitely we will be going to follow them very effectively in the lab session too. So before actually getting into the PowerPoint presentation of this module number two, let me give you 
uh, overall brief idea of Power BI desktop. What are the views, how we can get data. So let's just start this module from a demonstration and then we'll switch to the uh, discussion to the PowerPoint presentation. And for that, I need to open my Power BI desktop, <clears throat> which I already have. So I have my Power BI desktop available with me. This is this is the Power BI desktop application. And let's just understand what what it can do for us. <clears throat> so the three main views that we would be able to see when we open the Power BI desktop by default, we are on the home tab. On this home tab, the first and the default view that we would be able to see is the report. The area where we would be able to sketch our report, where we would be able to design our report because here I could see we have a huge collection of the visualizations, a lot of visualizations which are available that we can take on this page and we can start creating multiple page. So remember Power BI desktop report is a multi pager information. <clears throat> We could see that there is a field option too, but as of now, as of now, we don't have anything to load on the visuals because we have not yet available as in because of this, uh, we, we don't have any data available as of now. So it says get data, get data, get some data on board and then start designing your visualization. So this is the default view. That is the report view. The second one that we have is the data view which would help me to see the data with which I'm going to work. So since as of now, I don't have any data available in my Power BI desktop. This area is blank. This is blank for me. <clears throat> the third view that we have is the model view. So this is the data model. That we were talking about basically the area where we would going to spend a lot of time in designing the data model establishing the relationships between the logical tables so that they would impact the visuals in an effective manner. So these are the three important views, the report, the data and the model and the default one which will get open when a Power BI desktop get launched is the report that is important. Now <clears throat> there are many ways to get the data as in this is one option through which I can I can click and I can get the data. I could see some of the some of the uh, maybe we could say widely used data sources available. So Excel is the one SQL server is the one. And if I have to manually ma enter some data data fields, I can do that stuff. But yes, we have this get data option which will allow us to connect to the data from multiple sources. So let's just explore what all options or what all data sources do we have? Because initially we have mentioned that Power BI holds this capability to connect up with multiple data sources at a time. So let's get and we could see some of the common data sources in which we have supported text and CSV files. We do have the Excel workbooks. We have data coming from web. It could be a blank query. It could be the Power BI Power Platform components to that is the data set, data flows, data words, so on and so forth. Now let me go to this more option to explore. <clears throat> so when we come to this more option to explore, this is the entire list, entire list of sources through which we can easily connect the data and they have been bifurcated category wise too. So this is the first that we have that is the file based. Now when I say file based, it could be Excel file. It could be the normal XML file. It could be the text or CSV JSON. So there are so many of them base file based data storage mechanism. Then the traditional databases. So SQL server. MySQL database Postgre, Sybase, Teradata, MariaDB. You just name the databases and they are available. So what do you need? You need to connect up with them. They would be requiring some set of connectors, certain credentials, and then definitely you can connect. Power Platform, an entire separate wing of uh, PL200 that we have, PL200, PL100 that we have. So we there we understand how to create a data words. There we understand how we can create a data flows. Uh, 
and we can connect with these data sources too. We have an entire section of Azure supported uh, data sources too. Azure SQL databases, Azure Cosmo DB, that is generally we used to call them as NoSQL. So NoSQL databases where we don't have the structured data, where we, where we used to keep the unstructured data. We have Azure Data Lakes, Databricks, Azure Analytical uh, Synapse Analytics 2, and then we would be going to have the uh, Analysis Services option also available. So all these things are from the Azure platform. There are online services also that you could see the SharePoint, Dynamics 365, GitHub. So you just you just quickly go and just get the data that is available. During this entire training program, we are in your labs. When I talk about your labs, they are precisely focusing upon two of the very well known data sources, the CSV files and the data which is coming out from the SQL Server databases. So these are the two main data sources that you are going to use. Let me show you some of the examples. So let me start with this Excel workbook. Let's just pick some data which is available in the Excel workbook and that too possible it is available on this uh, system of mine or maybe through FTP you want that Excel work, work file or worksheet. So let me just say and connect. So now <clears throat> it has just taken me to the area where I have a lot of data files and Excel files available. So maybe I can put pick some of them and I can get some data on board. So uh, let's say I have one one this data, this Excel file EMP employee data and I'm going to load. I'm going to connect up with this Excel file. So it is connecting to that Excel file and the important thing which I'm going to get here is whatever Excel file that you are going to connect up with. Please make sure this is a this is a kind of a prerequisite which is attached. The data which is available in that Excel file should be formatted as tables because we understand and we can relate with this fact. If I can just quickly go to my whiteboard. So we understand that we have an Excel file and within the Excel file we have multiple spreadsheets or a sheets. Now whatever data, let's say this is my uh, sheet one, this is my sheet two. Now whatever data that I have, let's say on my sheet one, it should be formatted as a table. Then only this data we will be able to get on Power BI desktop. If we are trying to connect up with the Excel files and the data is not available or not formatted as tables, then probably we have to encounter or face an error and that particular error will say that not formatted as tables or data is not formatted as tables. This would be the problem probably that we have to face if the data is not formatted as the tables. So we need to make sure that the uh, Excel sheets in which we do have data, they should be formatted as the tables. So now let me say I here have some department data, some history data and uh, some employee data to some random data that we have. As of now, this data is not selected. I have not selected any of them to load within my Power BI desktop because I could see both the load and the transform. These two buttons are disabled because I am just viewing the data. I'm just previewing the data. I have not yet selected. In order to select, we need to check this checkbox. So let me say I want this employee data and see automatically this load and this transform data. These options get highlighted. So I want this employee data and let's say I want this department data too. And as of now, I'm not getting into transform <clears throat> because the next module that we are going to cover today, the third module that is precisely going to talk about the transformation activities only. So we'll wait for it and we simply load because we were just loading the data in desktop just to show you what all kind of uh, sources we can have and we can connect up with. So I'm just loading the data and we could see Data has start getting loaded in the model. It is loading into the model. So this is something which is happening and soon we would be able to see data getting available in the fields. So it is available in the fields now for me. And when I go to the data, I would be able to see that I'm able to see the data. So this is my department data from the Excel. It is loaded to my Power BI desktop. So this is my employee data. And 
in the model also i have two tables so these are the two tables i have one is the employee another is the department and in the report now i can start i can start using the visualizations so this is this is the one example that we have seen we have just got the data from the excel let's explore some other options too uh, let me use the web one and for that let me quickly go and get a web component so probably i could say uh, covid 19 Let's just see if I get some. Okay, so this is the graph which I have. Maybe <clears throat> I can get this. And let's see if we do have some tabular data available, so that we can take a u. We can get a use of that tabular data. There are some images that we have. Mm. Let's see. This is. this is what this is a table kind of stuff that we have or maybe if we can make it a little more easy <clears throat> that would be more better so it has it has lot of data this wikipedia images and uh, this this data is there i could see a tabular data also some dashboards so let's just quickly hold this and let's use this so this is the web from which i i need the data precisely and for this again i'm going back to my power bi desktop and again going to get the data and this time my source is web this is the web page from which i want data so what i need i need to just simply give the url say okay and it is going to connect me to that particular source the source is there which is going to open up all the tables and the information available in the navigator and i need to have the one of my choice so maybe this is the one which we were looking forward to covid 19 dashboard sample tested so on and so forth this is as of 5th of january the data that we have so let me quickly get this one <clears throat> we do have some more data also but uh, i believe this is the one which i can have so i'm just using this and saying load in my power bi so again this is going to get loaded in the power bi desktop and soon will be added to my data model too so i could see covid 19 dashboard which is available i can go to the data and i can view very well <clears throat> so i can i can logically rename these columns but that would be a part of my transformations so as of now i'm just viewing what how how we can get connected to multiple sources so you could see this is the one example i have some data on board and that too from two different different sources some is from excel and another one is from web that is why we say in power bi we can get data from heterogeneous sources all together we can combine them within the single data model and we can we can now make sure that how this data model is going to communicate with each other that will help me to prepare a realistic reports let's keep moving so we have added some data from web some from excel now let's see this sql because you would be going to use this one in your <clears throat> labs activity very very frequently so when we go to this sql server some important things that we need to discuss now it is going to ask the server name definitely i am going to connect to a database <clears throat> that could be available locally on my machine maybe on premises or probably there could be a possibility that that particular database is available at some other location on premises itself maybe i am in my office and maybe in the server room that database is situated on some other machine so what i need i need a server i need a server a port a communication address ip address or maybe a machine name with the help of which we can establish a communication so we need a server and we know a server can host multiple databases so that is why it mentions which database you want to connect you can optionally name your database too now let me just give the name so for me my database is available locally on my machine by the way your virtual the virtual environment that has been given to you for your lab activities 
that is a full fledged virtual environment that you have so it that virtual environment along with the power bi it also have microsoft sql server also available so that you can easily connect up with the database okay <clears throat> now there could be a possibility that this this local host uh, server may have some good seven or eight databases so which database you want to connect let's say i have a testing database production database sales shipping and uh, maybe some inventory so which database you want to connect up with just simply write the name if if you want to precisely go for that database more advanced in more advanced manner if you know how to interact with the database if you know that uh, how to write the tsql that is structure query language just to get the data from the database you can explore this advanced option too so you can use you can uh, you can use those tsqls maybe i can just simply write a statement select uh, all the data from my test table that we have so if i know how to write sql i can write that sql statement here or probably if i want to call some stored procedures or functions so this is the place where you can just test your sql skills and uh, you can simply get that data only effectively available otherwise we will be going to load all of them because this advanced option uh, this advanced options are optional database name is optional all all require is what all require is that simply give the name of the server and say okay and get connected but hang on other than these optional options that we have we could see a data connectivity mode available here in which the default one is import and the other one is direct query now what it is if i if i simply go back if i close this as of now i simply come back to the data which i have loaded how can i check how i have loaded this data what was the connectivity mechanism i have seen the two which are available import and direct query so my excel files the storage mode is import for this also it's import let's see for the web one this is also import as in when we try to get the data from the excel workbook it say import the data when we get it from sql server it say import for everything it says <clears throat> import the data then what this direct query is all about what this direct query is so let us understand with the help of an example okay so i am going to give local host here and this time i'm not going to select import i'm going to select the direct query and we will see the difference we already have uh, two of the sources through import excel and the web one let me get data from sql through direct query okay so i'll say okay and it is going to connect up me to the server so local host is the server on which i have four databases these are the four databases that we have now within a database with which you want to connect let me let me say i want to go to this adventure work 2020 database when i expand i would see that this particular database has 27 tables available so they are all available in sql and now pick the tables that you want and let us understand now some of the intelligence capabilities of power bi power bi is really very intelligent tool let's see how now while accessing your data from the databases like sql oracle which do carry some referential integrities in them now when we say referential integrities you could see here you could see that there is a sales table there is a product table and uh, there is a reseller also there is a customer employee these are all the tables which are available now let me quickly come back to my <clears throat> whiteboard and let's just see let's take an example that as of now i am in the i am in my on premises database station where i have databases so since i know i have databases i'm just quickly going to take one example i have one sales table so i have one sales sales table and this is a sales table that i have and maybe i have one product table and let me say i have one uh, one sales territory table too 
sales territory table also which have region country and and stuff like that obviously in my database there there would be a logical linking between them as in in my product table definitely i am going to have one column which says the product id what is the product id what is the name of the product the category its sub category the color of the product the size of the product whether it is finished or not the unit price and so on and so forth detail for that product now corresponding to one product id definitely we would be going to have multiple of sales records so this product id have been sold on x date also on y date also on z date also so on and so forth this information is going to be there now if i have one territory let's say i have Uh, Europe as a as a group or a region, and within Europe, I have United Kingdom, I have France, I have Germany. So all these all these uh, cities uh, and countries are there. So I would say this X have been sold in UK, this have been sold in France, and this have been sold in Germany. So there would be multiple details. So that means just to what is the purpose behind explaining all this stuff? that there is definitely going to be a logical relation between the sales and the sales territory and between the sales and product so that means there would be some referential relationship there would be some integrity which is existing between the data where at the database level now what is going to happen we would be going to use this data at the power bi desktop level so soon what we are going to do soon we are going to get this data where on the power bi desktop level now my power bi desktop is is very intelligent this power bi desktop tool is capable to sense the relationships which are coming from the databases so what power bi desktop do it try to sense those relationships and carry forward that legacy which we are com which which is coming from the database level itself how <clears throat> when we are connecting to the tables let me just simply say this is the sales so as of now i am previewing the data see i have not yet selected it is not uh, it is not uh, uh, enabled the load and the transform i have selected this i am going to pick the sales but i understand sales do have some other tables in relation with it 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 may be product it would be it may be the the territory which we was just talking about this one and and something like that now do i have to remember that which all tables are linked with sales no i can simply use this intelligent capability of power bi select the related tables now when i click this see what is going to happen when i click this automatically some of the tables will get selected which are in relationship with the sales table from the database itself <clears throat> so this is the this is the relationship detecting capability or the intelligence Uh, power bi intelligence that we have in this desktop application that when we get the data on when we get the data on board it will sense these relationships and it will be carry forwarded how they will be carry forwarded that we would be going to see in the data model so now all i am going to do is i am not going to take all of them let's just pick two of them probably and then we'll go ahead so maybe i said <clears throat> i am going to have the sales territory and this product which we were just talking about and uh, rest of them uh, i can just simply say no and we load it we load it now when we load again now see what is happening it is saying that you are getting data from some another sources why this error or this uh, warning kind of message is not popped up when we were getting data through web that is also another source the reason is they both i have got the data through import and this is the direct query when we get data through direct query there are certain uh, uh, differences that we have which we are going to see very soon that is why this uh, this warning message has come so no worries let's just say okay and it is creating the connections and going to load the data in the model data is loaded in loaded here i could see some extra things available over here okay <coughs> excuse me 
now what else this is through direct query this is also through direct query product and this one also through direct query but others that i have already the, uh, the other one or the previous one is through import what is the difference what is the difference between the two we'll we'll talk about it let me first come to the data model and show you these are the three queries that we have got two from excel one from web and they have come through import where no intelligence of power bi have been tested but this is the data which we have got just from sql where i could see that there is some automatic relationship that have got detected i have not created this relationship no i have not created this this line from this area or this from this this is the auto relationship detection capability how because of this <clears throat> because of this uh, extreme uh, intelligence of power bi that we have so it sends the relationship and it depict that relationship automatically within the data model now when i say this uh, uh, this capability of power bi or this intelligence capability of power bi we can turn it off as well this is available in my options so for every power bi desktop report or a file that you were talking about or you are working on with it do have its option and settings capability when i go to the options the options and settings are at for two levels global level and for the current file if i talk about the current file see what is happening the relationships are automatically getting detected and they are getting auto loaded when you are loading the data so it says import the relationship from the data source so this is the intelligence capability since this feature is enabled that is why power bi sense that the data source from which we are getting the data do they consist any prior relationships do they have any relationships if they do carry some relationships that power bi then power bi is going to carry forward that legacy it is going to load all those relationships and they would be reflecting in the data model now what extra difference this is okay that we have got the data from sql that is why this relationship is now what is the difference between this import and uh, this direct query that we have let's go to the data now i can see the data which is available from the web i can very well see the data from this excel and uh, this too but the moment i am going to see the data from product from the sales territory or probably from the sales it says these tables are using the direct query and the data can't be shown <clears throat> now what is the difference let's just quickly understand so just to uh, just to define the difference when we get data one way is we are importing the data and the other is that what we were doing we were doing the direct query when we were saying being importing the data import is equivalent to we are creating the cache of the data there is a local copy of data that we were caching in power bi desktop because of which i can view the data in power bi desktop whereas in terms of direct query there is no caching of data we are just simply looking to the data which is available at the source yes definitely we would be able to perform all the reportings as in if let's say uh, quickly if i'm going to take one uh, pie chart and on this pie chart i want that by countries so we do have some countries available and country wise if i want to view the the sales amount distribution so i could very well see the distribution i can very well see i can work on the visualizations there is no doubt but when we are getting data through direct query there are many limitations that we have to face in terms of transforming the data 
that is at power query editor level and so as there are certain challenges that we need to face in the data modeling capability too because i don't have local copy of data available so how can i see the data how can i perform some of the transformations now the question is when to go for direct query when it is good and when import is good generally we need to understand this capability that let me just adjust it a little here we need to understand this fact that we are using the power bi free capabilities free capabilities now when it comes to the free capabilities we do have a constraint which is attached to the data model size when we were working with the data model how much we can load to the data model we are able to see the data in the data tab and the data is keep on loading in the data model but how much we can load to the data model what is the sizing capability that we have so the default sizing capability for the free user is 1 gb you can't create a data model more than 1 gb with the free capability so we need to understand that the data model that we were designing <clears throat> it should be compact definitely we have some size constraints and on top of that later we would be going to understand that the smaller is the data model more better is the performance and optimized is the reports so we need to we need to take all those necessary measures that are compacting the size of the data models so when we have to have a compact size of the data model and my data sources from which we need to get the data they are not large they are minimal they are minimal go for import because you could see the data and this is this is the best of the choice that we have but when we have to load data on the data model and that is very huge in volume the data is very huge in volume we prefer direct query because if i am going to if i am going to import the huge data on power bi desktop my data model will crash because the size will get increase whenever the size of the data model will increase actually what is increasing the size of this power bi file is getting increasing this is the file we are loading we are putting the data over here in the file and the size of this this power bi file is keep on growing <clears throat> so we should understand this fact how much quantity of data we are connecting up with if the data size or if the uh, the data source size is adjustable it is compact minimal go for import which is the default and generally recommended because many of the transformation and modeling uh, capabilities uh, we would uh, be uh, we would be lacking off when we were choosing the direct query but anyhow when we have a huge volume of data or a voluminous data that we need to connect up with in that particular case we don't choose i mean we will we'll not go for the import mechanism will go and choose the direct query because in direct query we are connecting to the huge data directly we are not copying caching data anywhere in power bi desktop so it is our it is basically sparing us from increasing the size of the data model in in turn any query any question that we have from the section where we have just talked about that we have we have uh, actually explore three of the data sources available so we have chosen let me just remove it so we have just uh, selected and uh, uh, chosen the excel files we have seen one web example and yes definitely we have explored some of the sql sources also and we have discussed the difference between import and direct query yes my ank i can see your raise hand and yeah so i have two question two queries uh, one Please is related to the direct queries that you like basically just said can we go over it again as to uh, when to use direct queries yes yes sure so basically there are uh, there are some cases when we go for direct queries the one is that when we are connecting with the huge or maybe we could say a high volume of data in that cases we avoid to create the cache of data locally at power bi desktop because we do have constraints related to data model size 
Definitely, when we go with the pro or premium license, let's say if I if I talk about very extensive part, then we do have uh, data models of size uh, 100 GB or maybe 400 GB too. But but we need to understand uh, in module number six, we would be going to talk about what all necessary steps that we take to compact the size of the data model. So. In spite of the fact we were using the free version or we are working with the license factors, we need to make sure that the data model is compact and precise. So when we want such kind of things uh, and we were dealing with the huge data, that is that is the need of the requirement or probably the end user. So we ideally go for direct queries, but personally and uh, as far as uh, some of the uh, some of the best practices as per Power BI also suggest we we try that we can avoid this practice because when we get data through direct query, there are certain transformation and modeling challenges that we have to face. So this is one way and the other is that let's say there is a there is a case where uh, we need to be connected to the uh, real time data which is keep on changing. So let's say we are connected to a data and that stock data is keep on changing, keep on changing so that I am refraining myself not to refresh the data model available in the Power BI desktop as in in my Power BI desktop, we do have a capability to refresh the data. So we create report and timely we refresh the data just to get Manually, we refresh it just to get the uh, changes which are happening uh, on the board. But when we are connecting my my uh, Power BI desktop queries as a direct query mechanism here, the data keep on changing itself again and again. We are uh, we are actually not manually getting into just to refresh the data some of the times. So this is again one one uh, maybe I could say advantage that we do have. But yes, everything has its its advantages and that two limitations. So there what we have as direct query. I hope the difference between import and direct query is clear to us and uh, how we can use uh, multiple sources to just simply connect and get the data on board. Understand what all we have discussed till so far. So we were we were here discussing that yes, definitely we can get data from various data sources which are available and it could be your SQL server. It could be your Excel files, your NoSQL. This is CosmoDB. And, and we do have some other other options too. By the way, when we talk about this uh, Azure analysis services, this is also a capability through which we can get the data. And just to make a one quick uh, note here that we have understood and we have discussed the difference between import and direct query. These are the two modes that we have just talked about. We have one more mode that is connect live. Now this connect live will be the option that will came into action when we actually connect up with the Azure analysis services or maybe I could say the SQL server analysis services just to show you if I can go back here and uh, from the get data if I click on this analysis services. So when we have to connect to the SQL server analysis services, we here get two options the import and connect live. We don't get direct query. So direct query precisely is for those when we were connecting up with the on premises databases and when we simply have to connect up with the data, we don't need that data to get cached. Similarly, we would be talking about this connect live is almost similar to the direct query mechanism, but uh, actually what will happen this connect live is going to give us the it will going to create the connections on fly. And yes, definitely we would be able to access the analysis services databases very quickly in that particular case. So sounds similar to the direct query, but it's not actually direct query. The, the option that we have is connect live. Now why I have picked this point. This is something which is important from the point of your of your exam. So if it says that we need to connect SQL server analysis services, which connectivity mode would we pick import direct query connect live or maybe there would be some other fourth option. So the option is connect live. We choose connect live in case of the uh, analysis services, SQL analysis services. 
let's come back so we have just discussed that uh, how to get data from some of the flat files now i was just talking about some of the errors and uh, the error the one that usually from the excel files we generally get the error of type uh, like data not formatted as tables or probably unable to read and load the file now there could be a possibility that i have some excel files available in the e drive of my system and later on i realize that my system administrator revoke my read and write permission on this drive and i am trying to connect and refresh my data available in my power bi desktop and there i am getting the error unable to read or locate the file so if you are getting this problem please don't uh, worry because this is something related to your uh, permissions that your system administrator is managing some of the time we do get certain problems uh, related to the direct query tool now what those problems are we are connecting my queries with the help of uh, or maybe my uh, uh, sources with the help of direct queries and uh, maybe after some time it give me it give me an error a connection time out or query time out now there could be a possibility that the data source from which we are getting the data that data source is not reachable maybe that machine has got abruptly shut down there is some maintenance work which is going on or probably the database administrator uh, enforces some nq mechanism maybe uh, within this time period to this time period only 10 users can log in or only 10 users can access this particular database and if i am the 11th one or maybe the 12th one i need to stand in a queue i need to stand in a queue so that will refrain me in accessing the data in accessing the data some of the time so this is one of the limitation generally i we used to face when we are getting data through direct query so these are yes definitely these are certain problems it is not only for direct query so some generic problems which uh, which a data analyst can face when they were trying to load the data from multiple sources so not formatted as tables don't have proper rights the source is uh, unavailable so this could be some some of uh, maybe i could say the usual one or a normal errors that you can you can came across data is coming from relational data sources we have just seen one example of sql so we we do have multiple of them <clears throat> getting data from no sql so uh, we have seen and we have just talked about that when we were getting data through azure cosmo db this is one of the example that we have when we are we were talking about no sql because when we say no sql this is a data which is not structured and when we talk about azure cosmo db is they support <clears throat> uh they support many apis and this is something we discuss in azure fundamentals like <clears throat> getting data through sql apis through through grammarly apis and there are so many of them so we can use them and we can get some unstructured data too on the board getting the data from the application so maybe if you could have if you have a sharepoint application or any any support folder and from there you want some data so quickly quickly you would be getting that data uh, on on your power bi and this is something i was just talking about that when we when we talk about the analysis services <clears throat> we go for the connect live we don't go for the import and we don't have direct query by the way here we only have the option between import and connect live so basically when we talk about the import import is the default which give you an access accessibility as in in case of excel in case of getting data from from web you don't get the option to direct query that is the default one which is the import because when we go to excel it say import the data whereas from sql because my sql database or maybe my other other uh, traditional on premises database they they keep on hosting a uh, huge volume of data too because they are scalable databases as compared to excel so in these we have an option that whether we want to go for import or maybe the direct query so this is this is something that the choice is ours so we are done with this module module number second 